Hello and welcome to the penultimate video in the current Ardu pilot on a helicopter series. Now, if you've been following along, you'll have been watching me over the last year, actually, it's taken a long time to do this, to take this OMP Hobby M4, install a Holy Bro 6C Mini in the back, set it all up and actually have it hovering. This time, it's all about the tail. The tail of a helicopter like this, for those of you that have had helis like this, is the standard type where there's a servo in the body that's actually controlling the pitch on the blades. And as the servo moves, moves the blades move as well. Because what happens in a helicopter, of course, is that as it's hovering, not only is the motor trying to spin the blades around, it's also trying to spin the body of the helicopter in the opposite direction. And the tail's job is to counteract that movement. Now, that means that there needs to be a little bit of pitch on the blades at the back to counter that movement for a neutral yaw position so it can sit in the air. And there is a process that you can go through to dial that in. Those of you that have already done a test hover may have found that as soon as the skids left the ground, the tail wanted to swing around one way or the other. You had to catch it on the rudder control on the radio, but over a couple of seconds, that would all be taken care of. What's happening there is the I-term, which is part of the PID controller on the Y-axis, which is what the yaw axis is, is actually rising up and actually taking care of that sustained deviation, which is actually changing the PWM signal to the servo at the back. That sounds incredibly complicated, but I promise you it's not as bad as it sounds. The fact that you've already got a hover, the fact you've already got a log file, means that we can have a look at what Ardu Pilot is setting the rear servo to so that it has enough pitch to keep the tail steady and we can use that to then set everything up mechanically so that it's going to work fine. The aim of this process is to have it so that the servo in its middle neutral position is putting that pitch in that's needed for a stable tail that's going to hold the helicopter's tail in the right position. And that means that then there's going to be equal throws in each direction for the helicopter to be able to yaw around the axis equally. So that's the objective of this. Let me jump on the computer. And let's have a look at this. And hopefully by looking at some of the log files and other stuff, it'll explain a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we'll re review the actual hover that I did to actually test everything. And here's the, how we can look at stuff. If we jump down here and we find the PID Y and we look at the I term, then what you can see is the I term starts at zero. As soon as I take off, it ramps up to 0.4, which is the actual limit it's set to. So it goes hard against that stop as it's desperately trying to keep the tail in a specific position. That is an indicator that the geometry and the physical setup of the tail is wrong. We can also look at the PWM values. If I go down to the RC output stuff, you can see here that what happens is 930 is the servo for trim position for the tail servo. That very, very quickly rises and this is roughly where it is. So if I just zoom into there, you can see that it's hovering around the 978, 980 value. So that's more where it needs to be rather than 930. And that's going to be incredibly useful. It's going to allow us to set the tail up much better. So now we know that that's the value. The way that I've done it here is I've unplugged the servo from the servo for output, connected a servo checker and set that servo checker to 980 and then made note of what the actual pitch on the rear blades is. I used actually a vernier caliper to measure the distance between the slider and the inside bearing race. And that actually exactly 7.5 millimeters, but what I've done is I've actually set that with a little screw on the top. That's going to be my reference. Then what I did, I unhooked the linkage from the servo and then set the servo back to the midpoint position. Now this is a slightly weird tail servo on this, and then it goes from 800 to 1000. That's actually the limit of the PWM limit on here. Those of you that saw the tail setup video, hopefully none of this is new to you. That means that 900 is the middle position. So I've set the servo for 900 and then reconnected everything up. Now, I couldn't get it exactly to 900 just because it's a fixed 
thing here on here. There's not a lot of adjustability in this control arm, but by setting the servo checker to 885, I could get exactly the same distance with my vernier caliper on the tail, so I know that that's the pitch that's actually needed. That's then allowed me to go back in and set the servo for trim position to be 885, and that's going to be an awful lot closer. How do we know if we've got it where we need it to be? Well, by setting it up like that, we now know that the middle servo position is going to have the same movement left and right. So that's going to give us equal aggressive tail maneuvers in both directions, which is what we want. Let me show you what that looked like last time I played with this. Here is a hover with the tail in that better position. And if we look at PID Y, again, we find it in the list we can see that it is far better. It's settling down still a little bit high, I would say. So I would say potentially we could offset it a little bit more. And again, if you can do that physically, great. But if you can't, you can use the servo midpoint. But this looks an awful lot better because the item isn't saturating. It goes to its maximum here briefly and then comes back down. It's not quite at zero, so potentially I need to add a little bit more on the trim position or ideally actually take care of that if I can mechanically with the tail adjustments on things like the push rod. So there you have it. That's how you do it on a tail like this. The trick is to make sure that the servo in its middle position is going to be inputting the pitch that's needed. And by using some of the log files, we can kind of cheat, get that value, put that value on the tail and then unhook the connections to the servo, put the servo back in the middle position and then reconnect everything up. And that's going to be an awful lot better. This tail stuff, this trimming stuff, it's very similar to what we used to have to play with in the old days where you had a, a GY401 gyro and you had to slide the servo up and down the tail to get it to stay stable in hover. It's kind of the same thing. But what we want to do here is make sure that when it's in the hover, the I-term isn't working really hard and that that natural bias that we need in the tail pitch is already there as soon as you take off. So join me for the next video where we will go through the tuning process with this. Hopefully those of you that have been following along are also having as much fun as I am building this helicopter. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.